They call it the HP NV34 All-in-One. Now I've just unboxed it, got it set up, and before we dive into it, I'm gonna just give my initial first impressions of the build quality, some of the features of it, talk about some of the things, then we'll go in and we'll talk about after I've now set it up, and then I'll actually get into full benchmarks that I've run. This will all be in this one video. So hang on, we're gonna get through it all here right now. First and foremost, as I was looking at the build quality, this thing's put together very well. Very minimalist design aesthetic. You actually can charge your phone right here on the base of the system. I'm gonna try not to call it a laptop. I review a lot of laptops on this channel, so forgive me, the base of the system. Uh, and then it comes in this all nice matte silver finish. So you got a nice matte silver keyboard, the mouse and the entire body, plus the webcam, which is included, and has really nice functionality, are all in this nice matte silver color. So if you're looking for a minimal setup, as in like a minimalist design aesthetic, this really nails it. Um, also, there's a lot more custom functionality than compared to something like, you know, Apple that does very good minimalist design. First and foremost, one thing that stands out to me is you can actually technically upgrade this system. So there's room for four RAM sticks. So there's two occupied, two unoccupied when it ships to you. Okay, so right now this is configured with 16 gigs of RAM and one one terabyte SSD drive. You can also add another SSD drive to this system. So say you buy it with one terabyte, you wanna to upgrade to two terabytes, or you buy it with one terabyte and you wanna do two two terabyte drives. Like the reason I think this system is great for creative professionals is because the upgrade path is very simple and easy. So if you're a non like technical creative, you could still upgrade this on your own. To upgrade my you know PC build over there would take a lot of work and a lot of technical know-how. With this, it's very simple. Four so dim DDR4 RAM sticks and then two M.2 SSDs all swappable. So really awesome. Now the interesting thing about that is the specs on the system are as follows. It has an i7-11700, an RTX 3060, one terabyte SSD, and then 16 gigs of RAM. Now, something interesting about this is that the CPU is a desktop variant CPU, and the GPU is a laptop variant mobile GPU. So I find that kind of interesting. And then the motherboard also takes so dim RAM, which is different than most desktop computers. Most desktop computers take those full big RAM sticks. So there's kind of some interesting things happening here to make this a very consolidated minimalist design. Also, this power cable back here does not have like that big power brick, you know, those big AC adapters, those bricks that normally come with power supplies. It's actually built into this system. So there's a lot of interesting things taking place in this system to make it so minimalist. And we'll look into more of the performance details later in the video. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into the screen. This is a 21 by nine aspect ratio 5K screen. It is sRGB to 100%. It has a high Adobe RGB and a high DCI P3. Now I wish that Adobe RGB was 100%, but it is not. I think with some color calibrations, we could get it a little bit higher, but it does have a nice 100% sRGB and high Adobe RGB, which I really like. Now the screen is great because it has this partitionable setup. Okay, so the system comes programmed in the software to make it where you can divide up your screen very quickly. So for instance, we have Premiere Pro pulled up and I can set Premiere Pro in, uh, across my entire screen, right? It gives me plenty of screen real estate for the program monitor so you can see what you're editing, plenty of room for the timeline, and then you have your settings and effects panels on the one side, and so you have a lot of screen that would normally take two monitors, and that just doesn't look clean. It looks very cluttery and messy, and so if you want a very minimalist design on your desk setup, man, this really nails it for you. Now, another cool thing is built into the software is you can manage where your screens are positioned. So for instance, I can come up here into this top right corner, and I can click in the minimize and maximize screen uh, dialog in the top right corner of a, of a pr program like Premiere Pro, and I can make it divide itself between each screen. So I can set this one to be one, two, and three. So Premiere Pro, maybe like a YouTube video, and then my source files. So it, it really makes the screen very flexible and the software is already built in. So you don't need any technical know-how to figure out how to set this up. It's just ready to go. Love that. The screen is great, high quality, got some good screen brightness and great color gamut range. So they really nailed that. Now the webcam is another thing I really like. 
Um, I'm gonna give you a quick test sample of the webcam, show you some features and the functionality of it. But first of all, you got this open and close, you know, so you don't get cyber spied on. You can actually lean it down so you can show people like your projects and your work and what you're doing. And then you can even make it to where you can go to uh, portrait mode and it will automatically rotate. And I'll show you that in the sample of the webcam right now. Here, here, here is the HP Envy 34 webcam. It actually looks really good. This is probably one of the best webcams I have reviewed. And of course, here's an audio sample for you. Now, if you wanna take a look at the note on my desk, some notes from the review, it doesn't really focus super quickly. You kinda of have to like show it what you want it to see and then set it down and then it's in focus. Now let's go ahead and shift it to the side as well. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about when I go and I put it on the side. So you see I put it on the side there and now you can see me from the side angle. So it's a really nifty camera, very responsive and quite high quality. So I'm excited and impressed and of course, boop, for cyber spying you can put that little filter that comes over the top. But yeah, great webcam. Really, really nice that it's also just included in the system. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is the keyboard. Now the keyboard matches very nicely. It's got good tactile feel. It's more of a medium to short key travel. It's not like a mechanical keyboard, like one of those gaming keyboards, but you do have your numpad. You do have a nice full key selection here. You get your arrow keys, everything you need. Now this mouse, I'm not really stoked about. If I were you, I would go ahead and pick up the HP Creator 930 mouse. So much better quality. This honestly just feels like a cheap 20 to $25 mouse. Um, I like that it's included, so you don't have to go out and buy a mouse if you don't want to. But if you're gonna be creating on this system, I definitely recommend the Creator 930. Nicely angles your hand. Got a lot of function buttons here on the uh, side of your mouse. Just, it's a very nice mouse. I did a full review of this about a year ago and I just have used it ever since. Um, so that'd be my recommendation, pick up one of these guys. Now, here's a quick audio sample of me using the keyboard and the mouse. You can hear what that sounds like. Now also, this does come with built-in speakers. And so here's a quick audio sample of the speakers. You can hear that as well. Now the system that I'm reviewing is one of multiple variants. Now this is the i7 11700H, like I mentioned earlier, RTX 3060, one terabyte of SSD, and 16 gigs of RAM. Now this one's around $2,200, give or take, when you're watching this video. That was at the time of recording. And so if you want the live pricing, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now if you do make a purchase through that link, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. They do have an i9 and RTX 3080 version of this uh, system. And so I'm gonna talk about the spec you might wanna get according to the benchmarks we're gonna jump into right now. So as you can see in Autodesk 3ds Max and Autodesk Maya, this specific configuration is not necessarily the best for 3D modeling. I would recommend going with the i9 and RTX 3080 version. It's gonna give you a lot more performance, a lot smoother rendering, and also After Effects. So if you wanna have great After Effects performance and great 3D modeling performance, I would recommend the i9 and RTX 3080 version. Okay, now if you're just working in Photoshop, so let's say you're an artist, designer, or illustrator, um, or photographer, Photoshop really does well. It gets about a six mid 600s with 16 gigs of RAM. Personally, if I were you, I'd upgrade it to 32, which is super easy to do, especially now that DDR4 uh, is a little bit more affordable since DDR5 RAM came out. This is a DDR4 system, so just keep that in mind when you're buying RAM. It's so dim, DDR4, and I'll actually link below the uh, RAM sticks I recommend. So I'll, I'll link those below so you're not confused if you wanna make the upgrade after purchase. Okay, so with 32 gigs of RAM in Photoshop, you're gonna get around an 830-ish points. That is fantastic. That is plenty of performance that you need in Photoshop to do all the tasks that you need. And that will count, of course, for Adobe Illustrator and Adobe InDesign as well. So this thing has the performance you need for that. Now, one area that surprised me, because we didn't see as great a performance inside of After Effects or 3D modeling, I was like, hmm, I wonder how video editing is gonna do. It did very well. Uh, we saw about a three minute 4K export, that's a nine minute 4K clip out of Premiere Pro with 72 degrees Celsius 
and really just like high 30s, low 40s for the decibel limit of the fans. So this system is very well optimized. It's very well cooled. There's vents that push air out and up the top. So it pushes the heat away from you, which is very nice. Uh, so I love how well this system is optimized. Now also 4K playback is very good as well. Really good 4K playback. I was very happy with it. Zero drop frames um, out of the 16,177 that are in the total project. So basically I load in some motion graphics, some music, some A roll, some B roll, and then just put that on the timeline and let it play through. Now, as far as 6K B raw and 6K red footage, it did pretty well. You can see those drop frames, you know, from 4K to 6K red, and it dropped in the thousands. So it could do 6K. Uh, I would personally recommend the i9 and RTX 3080 if you're gonna go for 6K video editing on this system and just give you that extra boost in performance. Keep in mind that system is gonna be around the 32 plus hundred dollar range. It's gonna be a bit more expensive, but man, you're getting such a nice setup for that price point. Think about it. Like if you were gonna buy a desktop PC, a, a system of this performance would be around $1,800, right? And then you'd have to buy a screen, then you'd have to buy a keyboard, then you'd have to buy a mouse. So it really all adds up really quickly. Oh, and you know, a uh, webcam. So that this all comes in this one system and still has great performance is a, is a big win. Now, earlier I talked about this being kind of an odd setup with the processor being a desktop processor and the GPU being a mobile laptop GPU. The reason I think this is weird is because I'm wondering why they didn't just go with the laptop CPU. Because if you look from last year, there's an i7 11700H in the HP Omen 17, and that was in the benchmark charts. You saw it. It performed better on 3D modeling. It just really stood out a little bit more. So I'm wondering if they would have gone with that H series processor in this, if it would have given us a little more performance. I don't know. It's just something I noticed and thought, hmm. It was an interesting choice to, to you know, kind of mix those two, desktop and laptop. Yeah, it was interesting. Overall, I think this would be a great purchase for video editors, artists, graphic designers, and photographers. Got this nice big screen, plenty of screen real estate, 5K, so it's super sharp, color accurate, great performance, and it has such a nice minimalist design aesthetic. It'll look really great on your desk, you know, if you want those more minimalist vibes. Links if ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.